Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Exeter Nexus. Exeter Nexus is a series of discussions where we spotlight breaking headlines and issues top of mind for our clients and above the fold in the news that bridge the topical intersection of economic and national security. In our Nexus sessions, we talk to Exeter's experts with backgrounds across industry and government to go behind the scenes on the topics they're tracking this week and get insight into what it means for the upcoming week and beyond. So again, we've got Carrie Wiven, Brandon Daniels, and Matt Hayden with us today. Now, oh. this, hello. We've got a very special Nexus. Now, first, it's the Nexus between another eventful work week and Memorial Day weekend. So that's one special kind of Nexus. And then two, Exeter is launching our trades framework. So that's our proprietary supply chain risk management framework and maturity model, purpose built to help companies confidently address the rapidly changing landscape of supply chain risk. So I'm gonna turn it over to all of you. Are we thinking summer Fridays ahead or things just ramping up? What are the stories that caught your eye this week? What's the scuttlebutt, which is a word I'm gonna to start to use a lot more. <laughs> How are we at Exeter viewing all these supply chain headlines through the lens of this new framework I just mentioned? So who wants to start? Um, I, so I can start. I, I think the, the thing that I noticed is that as we were working on publishing the supply chain framework that has been teased this week and then is going out in a major way next week, I kind of felt like supply chain was everywhere. And so I don't know if it really was everywhere um, or if it was just the fact that I've got supply chain on the mind, but I was on weather.com and I saw a, an article uh, that said that hurric hurricane season this year is gonna be more active than other years past and that they anticipate those disruptions to affect our US supply chains. And then they talked a little bit about the, um, uh, the pipeline attack that we had discussed a couple of weeks ago. And then also mentioned that our supply chains were already strained by the pandemic and um, by an elongated winter instead of winter storms. So, you know, the, the fact that supply chain um, issues are news on weather.com just kind of struck me, right? And so I was also seeing lots of other supply chain issues this week, right? So we're seeing geopolitical risks affect supply chains, but we're also seeing the pandemic uh, continue uh, to hurt some of our ally partners, some of our key trade partners like India, where, you know, they're still getting hit hard by the pandemic and um, they're doing everything they can uh, to alleviate some of the burden, but the U.S. demands a lot from India uh, from a supply chain uh, perspective, especially in our pharmaceutical sectors. And so that is inevitably going to hurt our supply chains. Um, and then this, the other thing that I saw was an article from Compliance Week um, uh, from uh, Jacqueline Jager, and she was talking about the new German um, uh, legislation. It's essentially legislation that requires due diligence into your vendor ecosystem for human rights and environmental issues. Um, and the uh, act, the legislation is called the Supply Chain Act. And so when you think about um, what's happened with supply chain risk management in the last year, we've gone from pretty niche, right? Um, pretty um, limited um, visibility into supply chain issues, into it being mainstream, right? It's, it's kitchen table fare. Um, and that, that really hit me this week as we were getting ready to launch our uh, trades framework and methodology. And, um, you know, it draw, drew a lot of parallels for me between what we were doing and what sort of the world is doing right now with regard to supply chain. I don't know what you thought, Carrie, if you had any of the same thoughts or you've been seeing supply chain everywhere as well. Yeah, I absolutely agree that it's really amazing the evolution of, of the appreciation of the importance of supply chains and how they really do affect our everyday lives. Obviously, you know, COVID probably being the, the largest uh, major event that drove that awareness, but then since just how it is really bled into you can't I, I can't go through my day um I was I was actually at a football game my son's flag football game the other night and I was just sitting there watching the game and I heard uh in in the background 
two of the, the dads talking about the microelectronic chip shortage and, and what it meant. And I was like, oh my gosh, they said supply chain. I heard certain two parents say supply chain. <laughs> that wouldn't have happened, you know, a year ago. So it really is, it just is amazing. I was jogging by a, a moving truck the other day and it had supply chain management on the side. So um, yeah, and maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just really sensitized to it and, and much more aware of it. But I do think um, the world has changed so quickly as it relates to you know, just understanding and being really aware and awakened to the criticality and sensitivity, right, of, of a lot of our most critical foundational, you know, daily uh, reliance on these supply chains and how fragile they are and how subject to disruption they are. And I think we see that not only in our everyday lives, but I know we, the three of us, certainly see it um, every single day as we work with our clients and help them you know, kind of move up uh, what we refer to as our maturity framework, our maturity model to help them move from that, you know, where they, most of them start is that very reactive posture where they're, they're just, you know, in reacting and, and, and have no anticipatory or proactive nature and what they're um, even understanding is the vulnerabilities or the risks in their supply chain. They're just purely reactive when something bad happens and moving into that much more awakened posture and then moving to a progressive stage and a proactive stage. And then I think where, you know, we're seeing, and again, as some of them, there's a bell curve here, obviously, but for the early adopters who are really trying to blaze the trail on this, um, you know, they're, they're really kind of now thinking about how do I get to that anticipatory and predictive posture, right? And I think that's where the future is, and we're going to get there very quickly. And I'm really excited to, to show more um, uh, about the work we've been doing in that space as we roll this out next week. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in real quick, Brandon. I mean, the challenge we're going to have this weekend, it's a Memorial Day weekend, and there's going to be people that are trying to rent a car and can't. I mean, there's, there's real vacation shortages that we have to deal with right now that are a direct result of uh, supply chain impacts that have both the geopolitical and uh, the, the traditional supply chain risk associated with it. One of the things that's, that's hopefully not going to be as big a surprise as we think it'll be is that when we start talking national security of supply chains and how we help customers see where that adversarial challenge may be is the world of dual use. And when we've got a White House saying this week that we're going from engagement to uh, direct competition, uh, that, that's a big signal flare that dual use and all sorts of supply chains that traditionally you may not have been tracking are now going to come into full scope. And so having a good basis of, of where you're evaluating your supply chains coming from, as well as knowing what your suppliers have as far as investors and everything else is going to come full circle. And it's and it's starting on, on legislative packages that may or may not come out this week. We're hearing billions with a B coming into that channel uh, at the same time political rivalries and competition ramping up left, right, and center. So it's going to be an interesting holiday weekend just to hear how some of this pans out. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great point. I mean, I think the idea that um, supply chain is an issue that um, the administration wants to get ahead of, but then also both parties wanna have stances on and they could inform the infrastructure packages. They could inform the, the ability for you know, commerce to, to make good on that promise that we're gonna get this right no matter what, right? Um, the fact that there's, there, there is some political wrangling, but more people are just trying to creep out in a more progressive, more active, more engaged posture on supply chain reform shows the alignment uh, that exists on supply chain risk management issues, right? I think, you know, this isn't, I, I think at least what I'm seeing in the federal government and in industry is that people recognize the downside risk isn't something that they can sweep under the rug anymore, right? Like most of the time it's like, oh, well, that's my third, fourth, fifth party you know, I've got enough contractual um, boundary lines. I've got attestations down that line that clean and clear me, right? But what we're seeing is in this German uh, legislation, 
Um, and in the supply chain reviews that were, you know, uh, a part of the president's executive order is that they want you to know whether or not there are human rights abuses, two, three, four levels down. And that's going to have reputational harm if you don't know, right? It's a, it's a competitive advantage um, in dealing with the federal government, in dealing with critical infrastructure, and in dealing with every industry now that you've got that kind of visibility. And that was, I mean, that was a far cry from true even 18 months ago. So I love, I love the point that you're making that as we start to see some of the legislation roll out and we start to see some of the reforms um, to American industry roll out, um, that inherent to those is going to be a requirement that you know, you've, you've, you can make your commitments, right? And that's what supply chain security is. It's, it's you can do what you committed to doing. And that's been really tough the last year because people didn't have supply chain risk management figured out two years ago. Yeah, I think that's a really important point, Brandon. It's kind of, you know, the complexity of this. And it's, it's, it's really, you know, long gone are the days where our clients and, you know, corporates and um, and government clients alike just, just had to worry about compliance. I mean, it almost seems like that was a luxury, right? I mean, the, the complexity and diversity of the risk factors and considerations that are, are there are now increasingly clear mandates um, that, are, that are being uh, promulgated across the board, thinking about a very wide and broad and diversity and type, you know, risk, risk um, categorization, operational, this financial risk, like you said, human rights abuses, those reputational type risks, um, criminal regulatory, it's, it's really, and then cybersecurity risk, which, you know, is just so far beyond, you know, the, the basic ability as we saw with Colonial um, and, and so many other examples lately, um, these companies just it just I think they're feeling so much pressure now and in, in demand to for to get after these things and understand what's going on in their third party ecosystems. But I think they feel like, you know, they're really having to like catch up very quickly. Um, and it's just a, a really fascinating phenomenon to see how quickly the space has progressed um, in such a short time frame. Yeah. Well, and, and just to clarify, I know that right now we can pull the lessons we've learned from cyber which is that compliance doesn't equal security and, yeah. and, and that it is not a ceiling, it is a floor. And that when we start looking at supply chain risk management inclusive of cyber, that we have that as the floor, not the ceiling for these efforts that are going forward. And as companies try to feel their way through this, they're gonna need help along the way. And, and, and I'm happy to say that I think we've got some decent solutions to point their, their uh, offices towards. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, what I'm hearing uh, included in everything else you said is that people are looking to go on vacation. And that, I mean, think of where we were last year at this time, right? And all the work you were doing. I know, you know, that the team was, was working on something very different in terms of supply chains and PPE and vaccine distribution and all of that, all of those logistics, very different than vacation. So at least we have, you know, some other maybe positive supply chain problems going on. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's an up and up. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, that's a good reflection. I hadn't thought about that last year. I'm pretty sure I was getting ready for like my 20th all nighter at this yeah, point. Yeah, Memorial Day was very different last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope this team especially will get that vacation. I hope you filled up your, your car with gas. I hope your families and you all have some relaxing time. Mm -hmm. And I hope anyone listening gets the same. And maybe while you're doing that, you've listened to this uh, Exeter Nexus. And uh, if you have, we'd love to hear what you want to talk about next. So shoot us a note. Let us know the things that matter to you that you want to hear from our experts on. And thank you again to Carrie, Matt, and Brandon for this um, fun session and uh, happy Memorial Day to everybody. I hope you get some time down with your family. Thank you.